Welcome here to the End the Money podcast for KeelanSelect.com. I'm Tom Leach, along with Jim Goodman, Keelan's Director of Mutuals and Simulcasting, as we take a look at the feature race in the late pick four, well, the Sunday card at Keeneland to close out a great opening weekend. And it starts in the sixth race, Jim, and uh, got a, uh, a nice group of uh, maiden horses here. Who did you land on? Yeah, sometimes after the Bluegrass weekend, the Sunday card is kind of a you know an afterthought but these last four races especially are really nice races for a sunday card anywhere so i think it's a it's a nice handicapping challenge this one um i, I did two things here I, I went through the through the whole all 12 horses plus the also eligibles and um i wrote down a number of multiple contenders and then i, then I went through the rest of the race card the, the last four races and i decided that i need to spread more in the last two races than i do in the first two races so I'm going to take a stand here on the Pletcher horse, American Patriot. Um, Castiano rides him back at a mile and an eighth last time, just got beat by neck and was, was favored at, at uh, three to two. This is all, this is a little shorter. The mile's shorter, but he ran seven and a half in his first race and, and only got beat by three and three quarters. So he's a closer, but he's, he's drawn perfectly outside. Castiano is absolutely a, a tremendous rider and takes him back. So I'm going to take a stand with American Patriot in my pick four. The other horses I liked in here, I like Town Classic for Brian Lynch on with Le Peru on the rail. I like um, Commend with Les Cano and Bill Mott second time, although the horse didn't run very well the first time. You always got to look at Mott second time out. He never gets him ready for the first time. Party Barn, the seven, uh, for Karen McLaughlin. Ran a big race last time out at Gulfstream at seven and a half furlongs. It just got beat by half a length. Hockey School comes out of that same race, the five horse. And then the 14, if um, if he draws in, not a luch. Uh, with Alvarado has a real shot, so you got to take a look at the also eligibles here too. So those horses I all like, but American Patriot only two lifetime starts has a reason to move up, and I'm going to single the ten American Patriot in pick four. I took American Patriot as, as well for a win pick, but it was a close call for me with uh, Command because, as, as you mentioned, Mott uh, with a second time out horse can be really tough, and uh, these horses that uh, come in out of those Gulf Stream. Um, maiden races down there and allowance races they're um, really I think uh, playing a tough schedule if you will down there so always play a lot of attention to those horses American Patriot uh, Commend and Party Barn are the three I would use in uh, starting off my pick four which we'll talk about that ticket a little later but the two Brian Lynch horses Town Classic and Hockey School the five uh, you know if your budget allows you to go deeper um, I I would uh, certainly could make a case for, for adding those two as well, but uh, American Patriot will be my win pick. In the seventh race, I think it's one of the fairgrounds shippers. I think there's four of them. One of them's coming off a maiden win, so I would, would not use that one. But uh, the one I took was the horse dropping in class for Larry Jones, the four, another badge. But uh, seven, Eva Sugarloaf, 12 for you, Michelle. Uh, you know, if I was just betting that race, I'd do maybe a three horse exacta box on those. Uh, if I, to, to, Make a win pick, it would be the four, another badge, but all three of those I'll use in the pick four. How about you? Well, I'm going to take the one coming off the maiden win. Uh, I just thought that that race was outstanding and uh, won by three and a half. Uh, it wasn't the favorite. went off at almost five to one after uh, that was first-time turf, and this is going back to the dirt, but I really like the progression of the horse, the 57 to 65 to 76, even though he'd been off a long time. He came back running and... and uh, or she came back running, and, and uh, I like that 76 buyer. Uh, Jack Frost is 8 for 37 in 2016, so I am going to take the um, the maiden winner coming back. Um, and I will use uh, her with another badge, the Larry Jones Billy. I always got to look at her, but the, the numbers don't look really good on her. But she's coming out of an optional 50,000, dropping to 20. So um, La Crema Rouge, the 8, and another badge, the 4, would be my two choices in here. Eighth race is the allowance feature. It's on the turf, and uh, it looks like a nice group. You've got a couple of horses that are coming, dropping down out of the Swedish Chant, a grade three down at Gulfstream. You've got uh, a couple of horses coming off nice uh, uh, maiden wins down at Gulfstream. Where did you land in the eighth? I landed with a lot of them in the eighth. I, I could only eliminate a couple of horses in here. I, I don't think seeing and believing the seven, I don't think La Piba, the three, can win. But you can make a case for the rest of them, even the ones that haven't been running well. Lily's Dream, the 11, uh, has been off since October. Uh, they they thought enough of her to run in the Jessamine last year, and she didn't get. She only got beat by five and a half to harmonize. So you got to look at her. Uh, some of the other horses that that haven't had as much experience. You got Miss Katie May from uh, from Ireland, 
coming over for ground motion, first time in North America. You've got Lope on the inside uh, for Al Stahl, only got beat ahead uh, in a stakes race at fairgrounds. So I am going to go really deep here, um, but I'm not stupid enough to go only all minus two. So I'm going to take them all right here. So I'm going to go all 12 horses in this race, and I'm hoping to be alive into the last one. Because you could take leave out those two and guarantee one of them would win, of course. That's right. You, you never take, <laughs> never, ever, ever take 10 out of 12. <laughs> uh, I ended up taking gliding by for Mott over the 12 hold harmless, uh, the two horses dropping down out of the sweetest chant, and mainly because of the post position. I also like Castellano taking the ride on this horse, but uh, five posts versus the 12 was the edge for me. So I, I think those two were close for me. Um, Heavenly View, uh, Pletcher, maiden winner, uh, Conquest Dynasty, Cassie maiden winner, Lope, who ran really well on this turf course last fall. So um, I like all of those, uh, but Gliding By is going to be my win pick. I think if I, if I was just betting that race, I'd, I'd use Gliding By and Hold Harmless uh, on top and Exactas and then put those two and the other three I mentioned underneath. Ninth race, I'm going to take Vindicated. It's a Tom Amos claim. Uh, horses won eight times uh, lifetime, and uh, Amos is pretty sharp and picking horses out to come up and win here at Keeneland and Churchill in the spring. So I like Vindicated there, but not a real strong opinion. Uh, I thought Old Army's last race was really good. Uh, Newfound King from Montana uh, is, uh, hadn't run well at Keeneland, but uh, uh, there's some things to like on his resume. If you want to go deeper, the two Yukon Sky, the three Sideways Vision, um, so for my pick four ticket, I'm going to use the three horses I mentioned in the first race, American Patriot, Party Barn, and Commend. The three fairgrounds horses I mentioned in the second, the four, seven, and 12. Then I'm going to just go with gliding by and hold harmless in the eighth race. And then I'm going to take all five I mentioned in the last race. So three by three by two by five. How about you? Well, with my all, I've got a little more expensive ticket. Uh, the ninth race, my top pick is Old Army for uh, Alvarado and Catalano. I really like... Uh, coming off the turf last time at Fairgrounds and uh, got a 78 buyer, got up by neck and uh, dropping from 17.5 to 10,000. So I think Catalano wants to get a win here with this horse. So Old Army would be my top pick, but I'm going to go six deep here. Uh, using this in the uh, early leg of the pick four, the six, uh, sixth race, I'm singling American Patriot, the 10. And second race, I would use La Crema Rouge, the eight, uh, another badge, the four. So four and eight in the second leg. All in the third leg, that makes it a little more expensive. And then six horses in the last leg, I would use one, two, three, five, six, eleven. So uh, Cowboy Cody, Yukon Sky, Sideways Vision, um, Cops, Vindicated, and the 11 horse Newfound King. So I would go six deep out there. So one by two by all by six. It's a little more expensive but uh, might be worth this, I think, $72. You get several ways you can uh, wager on the races. If you can't be at the track, you get the Keeneland app on your smartphone. Uh, go to keenelandselect.com. And then simulcasting in the Lexington market is at the Red Mile. And uh, also they do a shuttle service, free shuttle service, from the Red Mile out to Keeneland on Fridays and Saturdays during the spring meet. So uh, just you go to keeneland.com to find out more about uh, all of these various features and We'll be back on Wednesday for another edition of the In the Money podcast when the spring meet resumes for KeelanSelect.com.